Do you walk like this? Or maybe your posture presents itself in this way and you always find that you have tight glutes and hips. Well, chances are that these muscles right here are likely in a chronic state of contraction. When this happens, it can lead to a feeling of having chronically tight hips, lower back pain, and even continence issues. In this video, you'll be taken through how to restore your glute function so they can finally learn to relax and work through their entire range of motion, both in the lengthened and contracted fashion. Let's get into it. So for this first technique, we're gonna do a little bit of a glute mash up. So you're gonna wanna grab a kettlebell, we're gonna use this to do some soft tissue work in through our glutes in a way that I don't see a lot of people work through it. So typically when people go into doing any release work through their glutes or their piriformis, you may get into kind of this position here where you bias external rotation. But the issue is if we're already in a chronic state of contraction through the glutes, then external rotation is just gonna feed that even more and we're not gonna be able to get more length out of them. So what we're gonna do is start in a external rotation. And when you're in this position, just kind of seated on the kettlebell, we're initially just gonna start relaxed. We're gonna to try to keep that depth once you find a point of tension. And then you're just gonna to start to roll the leg into a internal rotation. And as you're going through that, you're gonna feel the glute fibers just get even more of a stretch and a tug. And the intention is, is that when I'm here, just kind of hanging out in that external rotation, so I'm just letting the tissues kind of relax. I'm letting myself get heavy into that. And then I'm doing a pinch and hold technique where I just kind of roll this whole leg to the midline. I'm not just turning my knee in, I'm actually thinking about tracking the entire leg inward. Now what I would suggest here is hanging out here for anywhere between one to two minutes, kind of explore with some different points, play with some different levels of pressure. You can use this back arm here for how much weight you're putting into the hip and then just kind of let yourself really get heavy as much as you can as much as the tissue will allow for while staying relaxed and then you can just work these small articulations as you go through it so now that we have sufficiently broken up some of that tension in around the glutes we've gotten them to soften a little bit it's time to integrate and redistribute how we kind of carry tension so if i'm in this chronically fixated position of external rotation and that's feeding the glute contraction, what we're gonna to wanna to start to get into is some hip internal rotation. Now, there's a few different ways in which we can go about this, but for today, we're gonna to grab a yoga block. You're gonna go hot dog way, so we're not going hamburger. I guess this would be hot dog. So we're gonna take that, and you're gonna take it in between your thighs, and we're gonna use this as some feedback to get the deepest part of our adductors, and also potentially some pelvic floor activation here as well. Now, first things first, what we're gonna to wanna to make note of is how to actually get feedback into our adductors to kind of feed this mechanism of internal rotation. A lot of the time when I see people do anything with a block or a ball between their legs, they're driving that sensation from the knees. So they're just taking the knees in, and you will certainly get some adductor feedback that way, but in my opinion, it's not feeding fully up into the deepest part of the hip. And how we're gonna access that is I want you to imagine you have almost like a contraption that kind of looks like a U here. And what you're gonna do is at the highest part of that contraption or the deepest part of your groin, that is where you're going to initiate the draw against the block from. So taking your yoga block, taking it just above your knees, I'm not just gonna jam my knees together. This is gonna move in relative to the feedback of the deep inner groin muscles. And as we do that, we're gonna to start to find a hinge position. So I'm just gonna start by kind of feeding that sensation. I'm thinking about the bottom part of my pelvic floor almost getting pulled up this way. And then as I'm doing that, I'm just allowing myself to get a little bit heavier into the heels and kind of the midfoot. I'm finding a hinge and this hinge position is gonna be what's promoting internal hip rotation, which is gonna provide some length into the glutes. We'll get some hamstring feedback and adductor feedback, of course. We're gonna primarily use the stability off the adductors, the hamstrings to drive hip extension coming back up, staying connected to that sensation, keeping our breath in check. And we're gonna work through this for anywhere between about 12 to 15 reps with a tempo of about a three to four second countdown. 
I'm feeling into that sensation, kind of catching myself in the hips, going through my breath work here at the bottom, starting that draw down breath. And then I'm gonna slowly start to stand up through the push of the feet, taking myself back to hip extension. The more that you do this exercise and start to reorganize tension, it's gonna to start to get yourself out of this external rotation bias, start to close things off more. So when you go to walk, pick something up, you're more oriented into the hips in that internally rotated state. So, so far we have worked on breaking up some of this glute tension, allowing them to relax a little bit more. In our previous exercise, we got into feeling into our adductors and accessing hip internal rotation. What we're gonna do is build on that a little bit, and we're gonna start to add a little bit more of a dynamic and rhythmic motion to it through a lateral movement. So what this is gonna look like is, you're gonna get into a decently wide base, we're gonna go certainly a little bit wider than the shoulders, but don't go too far. Otherwise you won't be able to access the hips in the way that we're kind of looking for. So I'm a little bit greater than shoulder width, and we're gonna find a side lunge position. Now what's gonna be important when we're in this position is the alignment between three parts. That's gonna be our hip, our knee, and our ankle. And ideally everything is meeting kind of this imaginary pillar on this one side. What this is gonna allow for is for me to access hip internal rotation, biasing this right side, where now I'm getting some adductor feedback, just like in our previous exercise, some hamstring, and I'm also getting some length on this opposing side. Now we're gonna keep our center of gravity low, and we're gonna do just a smooth transition coming over being mindful that our feet on both sides are staying pointed forward. So we're trying to get out of this tendency of being in external rotation chronically. And we're trying to just close everything off while we get used to accessing the hip. What I would suggest here is keeping your center of gravity low as you're going through this and try to stay on each side for anywhere between about three to five seconds, trying to bias some heel pressure. Now just be mindful that the knee isn't in too much of a flexion. So I'm not letting this knee just excessively kick forward. We are trying to stay connected to the depth of this hip. And you can see where my upper body is in relation to this. I'm not in a full hinge, but I'm not entirely upright. We're allowing the hips to gauge where the upper body is in space. Now, once you kind of get the feel for that and kind of this motion from one side to the other, what we're gonna do is just incorporate a little bit of a shuffle. So I'm gonna start on this side, I'm gonna do a shuffle, catch on this opposing side, shuffle, catch. And you can notice that as I'm going through this, my center of gravity isn't changing all that much. I'm not standing up and then coming back down. I'm actually thinking about using the adductors to pull me from side to side while I dynamically start to access my hips on either side. You can work through this more dynamic variation for about eight to 10 reps on each side. And by the time you get to the end of that, you'll probably be a little bit short of breath. You'll have some good feedback into your adductors. And overall, the hips will probably just feel more mobile and connected. So as you've come to learn throughout the course of this video, if you want to relieve your glute tension, there's gonna be a lot more involved than just stretching your glutes and doing hip mobility drills. It certainly does require some level of length, but in a more integrated fashion. If you want to learn more about how the body works and functions in this more holistic and integrated way, then you can go watch another video I did on the body in some way right here.